Hello everyone, how y'all doing? So we start off today building a house outside. Now you're probably wondering why, and that's because we're getting an unusually high number of foreigners. So I figured we should build a house outdoors. And that's what we're doing. Now you also notice this image is still, that's because the camera didn't sit on it for very long because something else happened. So it's actually happening right this very second. It's why the game seems to be frozen. A battle has been formed. And you guys in the comments did say that you guys like seeing the foreign battles. You like seeing the other things going on in the world. It kind of helps build things. So Boba Tamagus, the battle has begun. Oh God, they are, they are fast as fuck boys. It's a battle between the cursed orcs and what appears to be the Central Republic, I assume? No. Who's fighting? Is it just a bunch of barbarians having it out? Barbarians versus orcs? Oh, it's Neanderthals on orcs. Oh, it's Minotaurs on orcs. No, it's, I don't know who's fighting. It's just a slaughter, okay? There's gunfire. There's a dragon? Somebody brought a motherfucking dragon? How is that fa- Oh, God. Boy, that escalated quickly. Welcome to episode eight, everyone. Our caravan with Candle Draw and, S and Solar Aura from the, uh, from the raid is on its way. Final Sight is working heavily to integrate the Outer Hut, which will be for someone who doesn't feel like they belong underground all the time. But he's working on that outer hut for us. We started placing the stone chunks around our walls, and there's a reason for this. Uh, the stone chunks around the walls uh, inhibit movement, and also enemies won't stop on the stone chunks to shoot. So it forces them to close the distance with us. I'm going to try to tame those Mega Sloth, and we're going to go hunting Alpaca and, and Deer. And the reason why is they're both male, so I don't have to worry about them reproducing. And honestly, Mega Sloth and Mega Wolverines are much better than bears. And when we get to making animal armor, I'd rather be making the armor for bigger creatures than just grizzly bears. So... We do need some names for those Mega Sloth, as I named that one, that's the Hedgehog prick, Prickly, and this one is going to be called Cuddles, because they extra cuddly. Yeah, we actually have some nuzzling pets, a, couple, uh, a husky, uh, a croquette, the, the tabby cat, a couple of others, and our caravan arrives home bringing 4,000 silver worth of loot as Solar Aura mounts up on Hoodie, riding triumphantly, having been to the ruined castle, negotiated peace talks with the Sun Dragon Rider Elf Clan, High Elf Clan, actually, the Big Knife Ears, and uh, successfully raided a Viking camp. And I don't know why some of the so some of the armor so i'm making individual unique helmets for everyone and i'm gonna be honest with you uh some of them are just better than others and i can't really identify why like that that full chain coif doesn't provide any protection to the eyes but the open bassinet does seriously look at the open bassinet right now while i got the menu open the, the, how does that protect the eyes but I'm trying to make sure everybody has a unique helmet. Um, so that's where we're starting with unique armoring. And how does this have the weakest armor out of ever? Like, like I think I should mention this to the combat extended guys. Hey, um, the closed chain flat top has absolute dog shit armor. I'm going to make one, have a look at it, realize it has dog shit armor, and then we're going to replace it and get that person a better helmet. I'm just telling you that now. Lori's making some more uh, golem butlers for us. They're not the really, they're not the golems we truly want. What we really want to find 
is some tone is some arcane notes to make tomes of golem or some golems just straight up golems would be great but that's not gonna happen in the meantime so we're gonna have a little little get together a, a celebration if you will just a time when we're together and 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 discussing things and have a speech and it's at this point I realize we need a we need a beer shelf in here so when we do these parties and we have Christmas we have access to beer and ale we need a beer shelf hey did you bring the beer no we we, we desperately oh. desperately need a beer shelf we have a good unionization celebration yeah, we celebrate the fact we're unionized. Don't judge me. Anyway. Candle Draw's taking a nap in the hospital. You're probably wondering what's going on. Um, we got hit with a... And so, we have to get all of this stuff ready to go. It's... It's, it's not always an easy process. It's not always an easy process, but sometimes you have to send people out. And this is going to be our first raid on an enemy settlement. The first one. Not a camp like we've been doing. No, a proper base like ours. Now here I'm setting up people's new loadouts. These loadouts now include a cigarette, a beer, some late medieval medicine, an ale, and some psychic tea. This way they have access to drugs to calm them down, drugs to pep them up, and just, you know, immediate, oh god, oh god, I need to stop this person from dying medicine. It's a slow process. It's something that has to be done. This is just, I mean, when you have a unique loadout for every single person and there's no uniformity to your loadouts because you want to have a colony where every person feels like a unique adventurer, a, a, a unique dwarf, because this is the one thing about dwarven armies um, in every tabletop game I've ever played. Every dwarf is unique. There's very little uniformity. Like, even Total War Warhammer, every single dwarf looks unique and like an individual. The Empire, you could... You can't keep track of individual Empire troops. Orcs, well, they're crazy. But dwarves? No, if you zoom in, you can keep track of each individual dwarf if you want to. Because they all have a uniqueness to them. They may all have axes and shields, but every axe and shield and beard and helmet and and coat they all look different just so you know um total war warhammer there are 800 different combinations for dwarven warriors they're the only faction that gets that kind of treatment and yet they're the most neglected faction in the entire game yeah i'm looking at you creative assembly what the fuck Anyway, I have sent Candle Draw, Solar Aura, and Adagio out on a quest to a legendary grave. Now, this isn't one of our graves. And I've sent them out while I'm updating equipment, so they're not going to have their equipment update. Shit. Anyway. I've sent them out to this legendary gravesite. To have a look, to have an examination, and to see what's there. We're going to disturb the grave. And you're like, disturbing the dead? That's a grudging. I'm like, you're right. It is. The legendary grave belonged to a member of the Empire that cast us out and has long since been forgotten and neglected by them. As far as we're concerned, their graves are fair game. And this is the beginning of our rebellion against them. We might not be challenging them directly yet. But it is the start 
of that rebel spirit. And I'm not talking about that rebel spirit from all them losers from 1860. You lost. This game has been around longer and, it, and has more sales than there were Confederate soldiers. I'm not making a political statement here. I'm just pointing out this game has a bigger cultural impact than the Confederacy. Anyway, uh, someone's transport is falling and it has three people on it that we would need to protect along with uh, five light infantry. When Orishan the Dragon, really appropriate considering that my Friday tabletop stream is called Here There Be Dragons, I stream on Twitch. You should come over to Twitch. I'm streaming almost every day, except right now when I'm off at a convention. I'm definitely not streaming right now. But when I get back... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, link in the description. Anyway, Orishan the Dragon has wandered in. Dragons would be a real problem. I'm going to roll the dice. Lilith is our best person with animals. Therefore, an inspiration to her is most likely going to be weighted for animals. Spire Taming! Thank you, Psychic Powers of the Bard! Yeah, that's why I went with Bard Psychic Powers. Myself and Lori are going to be here at the Colony 90% of the time, having Colony Support Psychic Powers. Now, this still isn't a 100% chance. An Inspired Tame does prevent the animal from going manhunter but it only gives you a three times chance to actually tame them and if you fail the tame the inspired tame goes away too so three times chance come on Lilith you're humming a song you're humming a song to a dragon yeah. A girl dragon! Oh, sure! I mean, of. Uh... Oh my god, it worked. That was a 64% chance, by the way. I went back and looked at the code. That was a 2 and 3 chance. If she failed it, I didn't have a way to give her another inspiration to get it. And then we'd have to deal with the dragon. You know, an actual dragon. Now, this gives me an idea. Dragons are, the only, are one of the few animals in any mods or anything that you can draft and take direct control over. This means we don't have to defend that crash site. We can just have our dragon do it. Take apart the shuttle for steel, plat mithril, and, uh, and components. The ancient shuttle that's now destroyed that can't be replaced. Good job. I respell Orishan's name to be proper. She's almost a thousand years old. Dragons live to be four thousand, by the way. And we have a dragon. Valea's relic comes up, and you'll notice the game footage is sped up. So our relic adamantine full plate armor has appeared. We still have to find the clues to locate it. But you notice the game is heavily sped up right now. There's supposed to be a raid from the goblins that come after this shuttle. We're moving at 300 times speed compared to what I recorded. Technically, uh, I also speeded up at a certain point to 500 times to try to get through this because I'm expecting a raid and I'll slow it down. When the raid shows up, the raid doesn't show up. Apparently, our dragon was too scary. And those trolls are full of chem fuel. Chem fuel trolls! That's what I said. Good job, Orishan. Good job. The, the raid never comes. We've been remaking geese out of um, less flammable material because we need flame resistance. Our armor is great for penetration. I wonder what the explosion is. It's these, it's these boom trolls exploding. Rescue shuttle shows up. Enemy army never showed up. Apparently our dragon scared them. Good job, Orishan. You scared them away. We never had to fight. And for our efforts, we received five Psychic Readers. Psychic Readers are broken. So I replaced the Psychic Readers with Bionic Arms. Three of them. And it, when I replaced them, their quality all rolled poor. 
So Lori here is going to have to, or in one case, awful, the worst quality. You got normal, poor, bad, awful. So Lori here is going to have to enhance them. Now you're probably wondering, could we? What are we going to do with arms? Nobody's missing any arms, correct? But several people have scars on their arms, and those scars make your arms less useful. Replacing the scarred arms is a viable tactic, and replacing it with something that's mechanically superior. That sounds like a very dwarven thing to do. Having auto mail like it's full metal alchemist and being a dwarf? Mmm. Mmm, that looks sexy. Don't tell me small! I'll break down your penis! I did get the beer shelf built. I realized then that, that we accidentally stored all the beer in here. But thankfully I've had this handy dandy stack mob, a stack limiter. And so I reduce it to where it's only supposed to have 25 maximum stored here. Somebody please go get the booze out of the brazier before it burns away. That'd be great. That would be great. And give everyone smithing AMSR, a a ASMR. And we have our picture of the base. The lower workshop section is finished. It needs some lighting. The nursery is almost finished. We converted the old temple that was too small to put everything in into a nursery. And we're going to begin growing more psychoid. We, we need the drugs. We, we need the combat drugs. And the psychoid is also useful for something else very important. Get on, hoodie! The psychoid is also useful for something very important. Uh, mana potions. I know those two are slower than candle draw, so I mount them on the bears so they can keep up. There is one person guarding this ancient ancient place, and I send Adagio to take care of him while our mages prepare themselves. And Adagio does a surprisingly fantastic job. He's gotten really good at melee combat he might not be the star of the show like candle draw and her murder but he is pretty good i'm gonna send solar over here to deal with the uh the murder hornets that are on every map <laughs> something a medieval overhaul adds and they're just really annoying because you you run into them on every caravan map so you can't quickly reform they're there specifically so you can't quickly reform a caravan and leave and we're going to start opening coffins specifically the two crypto caskets what we're hoping for is to disable don't murder okay okay strip him before he dies good the crypto armor's intact and it's not tainted we can't wear tainted clothes it gives a negative 20 mood debuff because of our ideology i put myself under that fuck he had the heavy armor god damn it that bastard had that you cut off both his fucking arms he had poor quality heavy armor it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like it did him any good because of the magma blade, but if Lori gets a hold of that heavy armor and enhances it to masterwork, oh boy, it could stop a magma blade at masterwork quality. The, the poor quality helmet is better than any helmet we have. And so they've got, I mean, she's had both her arms cut off and lived somehow is mine we thank thee lord that in thy mind ah! oh. come on then what how at you <laughs> you are indeed brave tonight but the fight is mine oh had enough eh look you stupid bastard you've got no arms left yes i have look it's just a flesh wound i might have a solution for the tainted armor i might have a way to untaint it but otherwise it's it's tainted. We can't we can't use it. Not without such a massive mood debuff that it would cause multiple psychic breaks. A quest that's only a fifty percent that's only fifty percent successful. 
I decide rather than raid somewhere else or risk something else, uh, we will head straight back. And we'll take the Wookiee. They've got no arms. We just got a shipment of arms. I'm not going to argue with that. Uh, the Bardiche can be used to give us access to military blades. The... Let's see here. Anything else we want to take with us? Who the fuck has a Mithril Legendary Hammer? Yeah, it needs to be fixed. We're going to take the Crypto Armors. Including the Tainted one, because I might be able to untaint it. And the Urn. Because the Urn is basically free artwork that we can't recreate. Plus, they just look nice around the base. They, 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 give, they, they give the base a unique feel. And we send. And Final Sight has been engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat by an iguanodon remember how i said his his hunting apertures don't always seem to to work out the elf tried to prove he could do melee and ran up to it and started hacking at it with his axe now i'm not saying he did a bad job but when it started hitting back he started losing so I tell him, get out your damn... This is what this is exactly what your double crossbow's for. Stun it. Shoot it. Take it down. Oh god, he's using his crossbow as a melee weapon. Oh god, final side. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. I married your femboy ass. I'm having your kid. Come on. Show some grace, Mr. Wood Elf. I gotta develop... We have to actually develop knife ear weapons for you. Because I'll do it. I'll develop knife ear weapons just for you. What in the fuck? Frostyota? What do you mean a Frostyota just showed up? Alright, well, this room isn't, um... We're going to have to build a big bed. You know, the Frost Jotun showed up and joined us and wants to take the steel full plate. I'd say let them have it. They brought some other full plate items like gloves and boots that we and shoulder pads that we can use to, um, to um, you know, make the full plate research. They, they can have it. Look, if, if, the, if the giant, if the ice giant shows up, joins you and then asks if they can have the full plate, the answer is yes. Okay, they can have it. I don't know how if, 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 how it fit him. By the way, everybody, welcome King Bronze. The Ice Giant. We gotta make him some new weaponry. Just, just, just how it be. We gotta make him some new weaponry. I'm hoping we get another Legendary Grave soon and that we don't kill the people inside and are able to take their armor because it's the only way we're going to get access to ancient power armor. Um, armor from a lost age, millennia ago, before the Great Rift sealed us away, and now you see when I get bucks. Anyway, we're going to sell some components, buy some herbal medicine from this merchant. They've got a dragon horn, I don't know where they got that. We've got Serenity Orbs, which are the Psychic Soothe Generators, but I have the Psychic Power to be able to do that. Uh, I've had... We have a Masterwork Bionic Arm now. We're going to be looking to get all three of them up to Masterwork, and then we're going to install them on the three people... On three of the people who have permanent scars on their arms. Turns out most of you have permanent scars on your body. We'll go over the scarring in episode 10.3... Uh, do remind or 10.5 the ep the special episode when I get back from the convention that I talked about do remind me in the comments in episode 9 and 10 and this one I feel like this hasn't been said yet and you're 20 minutes into the episode like button seriously it actually helps it's surprising I'm I'm genuinely shocked how good this is that it works for the first time in months, I've had a positive subscriber count because of this series. Thank you. It's appreciated. I'm starting to feel like maybe I'm actually a real YouTuber. That's a weird statement coming from me. 
and this one that I should go back and and explain and show everyone scars off we're gonna sell all the uh, all the ship weapons from the Raiders that have shown up that we're not keeping to advance our own research through reverse engineering and hey look somebody finally wants our old pelt coats I say let them have them let them have them um, we don't necessarily need those pants or that or, or that poncho and we only really need the boots or the gloves we don't need both so out the door it all goes it's nice to make money anyway I did not realize my metabolic efficiency our, our child's metabolic efficiency is awful and I think that's because of volatile slow wound healing uh, and the low mine yield but this is just their genes right now upon birth they'll get they'll get the I have a mod that will randomize to uh, uh, up to five mutations zero to five mutations so there's no promise of what their genes are going to be and their hair color can be any of those three but they're not going to be a dwarf they're going to be a half elf they're going to be much taller than mom no dwarfism here but they are locked to be female and they're going to have the agelessness of elves combined with the mighty liver of dwarves and the long dwarven lifespan so uh yeah they're gonna live a long time i'm staring at the screen telling myself right now to back off better stop talking about my baby and then i go back to sleep that was just weird the, the game it was almost like the game knew i'd zoomed in on the character um they're requesting money and i consider giving it it, it seems like a prudent idea to maybe to maybe give these visitors the money. We've got it in spades. We've got 15 grand on hand right now. They want a third of it. That's a lot of money to get their friends back, but it's their friends, and they're from a faction that, well, it's been wiped out. They've been completely annihilated. This is their only instance of people still here. There's still some stuff left over from the caravan that tried to pass by me that was an enemy caravan. Yeah, don't take the shortcut through the mountains anymore. The shortcut through the mountains is guarded. And the meadow ave, the meadow chocobos have returned now that the winter is over. And then something happens. The cop shogunate attacks! No one expects the cop clan! These motherfuckers. And they're showing up and the visitor and, and the people here asking for stuff haven't even got through the tunnels yet. Night has fallen and shit is own. Every wrong is recorded. Every slight against us. Page after page, etched in blood. Clan Gunnison, Karak Eight Peaks. The Kalf Shogun. We don't have defense bunkers yet. We don't have Dwarven Hardened Points set up yet. And then the Carp Clan attacks. And it turns out, as you can see, all the travelers also converted to red. It turns out those travelers had come here with every intention of getting inside our Dwarven Keep and betraying us. They had every intent. And that guy just absolutely executed her on the ground. No questions asked. So those treacherous travelers that we were actually going to give the money to are now going to buy us time to get our, to get our defenses up. I'm going to stick Candle Draw on the boys out front. I'm going to get Final Sight and Lilith over here behind cover using the stones that we've laid out as 
as temporary cover. I'm going to move into the middle of our formation. I'm heavily pregnant at this point, so I know I shouldn't be in melee combat. But I can sit here and provide chain lightnings. They're also attacking the back door. Which is going to become the front door eventually, but they're attacking the back door. It is... It is a fight. As Candle Draw runs by and murder. Yes, you, you knew the murder counter was coming. You knew the murder counter was coming. She's just 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 murdering people. Bronze's spear isn't very good, so despite him being a giant of a man, like a literal Jotun, his spear is not very good, so it doesn't have a lot of penetration. It just does a lot of damage. Now I see them attacking the back door, and Milk has tried to step outside and gotten ambushed. Our rock construct butlers decide to sacrifice themselves for milk and I send candle draw around south candle draw is gonna go on, gonna go around south around the outside because she's super fast everyone else we're gonna send through the fortress itself the candle draw is coming back here to find stragglers and take them out meanwhile everybody else is gonna move through our fort so candle draw is just Casually drawing one or two people, in this case three. Is that a spider person? Oh my god, they brought a drider. Oh god, he died instantly. That guy's gun. No gun. Bad gun. Just casually drawing a couple of these would be samurai fuckers. Back to her and then run playing runaway. We're staying here, waiting for the boys to get over here and then I realized the main force has actually just decided to pursue candle draw so I'm just gonna send the boys out go ahead boys rampage Medic. candle draw is holding the line Medic. jump and now we're taking Medic. advantage of the RPG stat system in Medic. that individuals including raiding individuals will have different speeds and so Candle Draw is able to pick them off one or two at a time. Meanwhile, anyone that slipped through, well, Medic! they get the Chain Lightning Double Crossbow Axe Treatment. Advance the line up as Candle Draw decapitates a man after stabbing him in the heart. Medic! <laughs> and then, uh, they're broken. With Adagio, Bronze, and Night Lexic jumping the last samurai from all directions before swiftly decapitating him with a massive strike of bronze's spear impaling him through the back of the head the second spider person the second drider will manage to escape however their daimyo lay slain on the battlefield the man in charge of the nearby cop clan, the cop Shogunate, the man in charge of the settlement is dead on the ground. You know how I know this? Because we're going to find something in a moment and realize we've killed their leader. Now, Adagio and Night Lexic are staying out to, to clean up. Uh, Adagio engaged in a duel with one of the fleeing samurai. And I tell him straight up, don't let that man escape. And then he just decapitates him cleanly in one hit as th th he tried to cut and run. Oh boy. I, I almost send them back out and then think better of it. And now the real casualties begin. Most people don't die during the raid. They de- they or most animals don't die during the raid. They die during triage. Adagio gets engaged by a lone samurai. I'm not sure how that man actually got all those bruises and injuries. And then I see Spike Trap. And I realize that they made their way all the way around to where we had built the Calvary Spikes and the Snap Traps. 
back here. Solar Aura is tending a rock, const a rock construct, and I say there's no point. Just let it die. So you're going to see all of our rock butlers. That one shattered with white blood. That was unique. But you're going to see them all, a bunch of them, 90% of our rock butlers are dead. There's no sense in wasting medicine on them. We can just some we can just summon new ones. It's a tragedy. But the golems are not these golems at least are not the kind that are permanent. There is a kind that is permanent. And I'm checking these travelers now, these visitors that we had. All of them have weapons. And then I see the daimyo. And he had a mass. He had the Masamune, the original legendary Japanese emperor sword. Where the fuck did he get that? And yeah, that is in fact a drider. That is a drider that generates free synth thread. By the way, Lilith has a new ability, and it's how we're going to deal with corpses from now on. She absorbs the corpses, and it increases her magical power permanently. As well as increasing her maximum arcane load. I'm thinking Lilith is be going to become a hardcore Frostfire Mage. Because she's going to have a huge amount of magic to blow. And that is the end of the episode. Thank you all for tuning in. Please do leave comments. I appreciate them. Enjoy this preview. Dwarven Crafts. Find Dwarven Crafts. Direct from Orzammar. Got a sword! Hey! You idiots! We've all got swords! <laughs> sir, sir, I had no idea you were who you are, Colonel Potter, sir. Get my gear, son. Yes, sir. Your permission to cover up my nakedity? Right. Yes, Hello, it's the end of the video again. I'd like to remind everyone these are pre recorded through May the 10th. Um, Stargazer Song and Captain, thank you both for being wonderful. That's all. Hydra... Hydrano... I can't even pronounce it. It's Hydra and Naros. Hydra Naros. There, I said it. Shadow Man, 1725. Thank you for the home. It's wonderful. Jeffrey Perigo. Where the fuck have you been? That's all. You know, it's all about you that I want to know. Ata, 1980. Hi. Again. For the 22nd time. I went back and counted. Kevin Cockrum, I remember who you are. I remember Florida. Good night, everyone.